let's talk seabirds. So usually when you see seabirds, they're way out there and you're looking at the shape of this thing as it's flying around and you actually identify some of them by their soaring patterns. Some of them do this really cool dynamic soaring where they don't flap. They are, they're, they're cruising down, kind of picking up some updrafts off of waves and then gets them a little bit higher and they can kind of go on for, for, for uh, months without flapping. That's some crazy. That's really cool. They sleep some of them on the wing. Ah, right. So, um, but they do have to come to land to nest. And albatross, well, well, they'll cruise out and they'll just kind of go around the ocean for some months and then come on back and barf up a bunch of partially digested fish to growing babies. It's really nice. Um, and uh, the, uh, but, but, but when they're on land, you can have a, uh, a really good chance to take a look at them. In um, this summer, a group of us are going to be heading over to the Galapagos Islands, and there's a number of seabird nesting colonies there, and they haven't gotten the memo that we are the most dangerous predator on the planet. And so they will just kind of like, hi, I'm, I'm the Nazca booby and I'm sitting here and I'm in the middle of the trail and I have, I decided this is where I'm going to make my nest. <laughs> so they're, they just kind of, they've got their own thing going on, but we want to take a close look at those because there's some really cool structural things going on about those birds. And this will also help you understand just a little bit of the dynamic of looking at these really long winged birds can help us understand some interesting things about even birds with shorter wings. So I am going to do a screen share. There I go. And so I will be doing some drawing demos over on this side. And, um, and we'll be looking at some reference material on the left. All the reference material bird photos today come from um, the amazing website, birdpixel.com, Vivek Kenzodi's uh, website for, he's a, just a master bird photographer and um, has invited all of us to use his work to help us understand the beauty, diversity, and structure of birds. Um, so after this class, you can head over there to get some more drawings of this, uh, of these, of these seabirds up close. Um, so let's, we're going to start off with um, getting kind of beaky here. Um, here are a couple of waved albatross um, giving each other, they're doing what's called billing, where they'll kind of nibble each other's bills and kind of get their bird kisses on. And um, we're, we have a chance here to kind of see the bill structure really closely. And Bird bills are covered with plates that in most of the little songbirds and warblers that we're really familiar with, these plates have become fused together. But this is sort of more of the primitive condition here. And um, so we're going to take a, a look at what is going on with that. Um, so I'm going to give my my friend the bird here, just a little ball of a head, and here's a neck coming down. And out of, and in the middle of its face is here, little eye line. And that means that its beak area is coming out of a vertical slot right in here. And from there, it is, coming out. I like to put in this sort of the, the shape of the place that the, 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 the bird beak is coming out to help me think of the bird beak as, as a three-dimensional, as a three-dimensional shape. Um, and it's curving down here. I have, you notice that there's several lines on this face, All right? So there's one kind of coming to the corner of the mouth here. There is, there's another that is going down, sort of the middle line of this upper part here. Um, 
So let's let's take a look at these different parts of the bill. All right. Um, we're going to start out here at the the tip, and there is there's a there's a hard bony plate, a hard nail on the. This is the the maxilla is the upper bill, the mandible is the lower bill. So in all uh, critters with sort of jaws, the top one that's the maxilla and the mandible is the one that. that so if you put put your hand on your jaw and you feel that moving up and down, that is your mandible uh, down there. So on on these critters here, I'm going to draw a little curve over the top and a little curve on the side. There's a hard keratin nail on the tip of the beak out here. So we've got a little hard keratin nail. And there's also one on the mandible. So the maxillary and the mandibular nails or ungulus um, are, are, are right there. Now, I need to have this line coming up here. Um, there's another groove. Uh, there's a, there's the, the, the groove between the upper and the lower bells. That's going to come so straight back here. But there's another groove here. There's a plate up here and there's a plate down here. And those towards the back, they split, and you see that where the nostril is, put a little, little nostril in here, there's another little plate that comes out and surrounds that. So um, here are my parts of my upper bill and parts of the lower bill. There's a little bit of a bump of feathers that comes in here in the mandible. And I'm gonna just sort of taper that off here. You see the chin feathers come out really far underneath this. And the feathers around the, along the, um, the, 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 the maxilla here, we have another big kind of bump of feathers here. I'm gonna put a little few little marks in there just to make it feel a little bit fluffy. To help show the center line of the head, I'm coming up here. And then I'm gonna wrap the head around this side of the, the, uh, of, of the bill. So if I want a bill to be kind of sticking in three quarter view, let's say here is my head. The, the bill comes in here. Getting this far side of the head to come in like this instead of having that far side of the head come down to the top here. You push it out like this and you feel like the bird is just, it's looking towards you a little bit. Now, all these different zones, um, little sections have names. And if you want to write them down, you can. Um, all those little plates have their own little names. It's not necessary to memorize those, but I know that there's a lot of, um, a lot of folks in our, our, our group, we like to kind of geek out on these sorts of things. And this is definitely an opportunity for that. I'm gonna put a little bit of a curve into this. Have you ever seen a, um, gotten a close look at a, Puffin. Um, on puffins, some of these 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 plates 
will be brightly colored and then they, uh, sh they're shed, they fall off and then they regrow. Sorry, kind of a puffin thing. So there's a kind of a close look at, this is again, a waved albatross. And on this magnificent frigate bird, we can see the same structure. So the proportions of those different zones are a little bit different, but we're seeing the same structure here. So let's just, let's just sketch that as well. So there's a long beak, the beak has kind of a little swoop to it. Big hook, big old fish eating face. I always like to look at what is the, the shape of where the feather meets the beak? What? Are they in line with each other here? Or very often you'll see the lower beak, uh, that edge sticks out like that. So on this one, I have this huge hook, this massive, massive hook on the end of this magnificent frigate bird. And here, the, the boundary between these upper plates is not quite as distinct, but we look for it. It's, it is still there. And just this little bit of feather coming out here on this far side, just turns that head ever so slightly towards me. So that's a good, it's a good little moment to look for. It makes our bird heads just, uh, just a little bit nicer. This <laughs> rascal is a blue-footed booby. And so notice here that the nail uh, on, the, on, the, on the maxilla and the mandible are more fused in here. We're still seeing um, these plates, the boundary between these plates here. But this is, it's getting a lot more like, oh, what's... These are getting more fused together. When, by the time we get to, uh, so on, on, on many birds, these are, are so fused, you can't see the difference between them. You're kind of knowing that they're there, you can still kind of see the traces of, of those. Um, a good thing to think about when you're drawing a bird bill is what are the proportions of this bird's bill? And so when I'm thinking about proportions, a good way to think about that is use the ball of the head. Imagine an egg sitting right in here inside the head. And if you flip that out here, how long is that beak? So on something like the magnificent frigate bird, you've got one head in here, then there'd be another head. You've got a couple of beaks, a couple of heads. Uh, growing out there. Let's just back up and see that bird again. If here's my head, here's another head. So it's a head and a half, all right? Um, but on, on this one, the head is about the same length as, as the bill. So that helps me get those, those proportions. Proportions means how big is one element relative to the other. And so I've got a back of my head coming down here. Um, I have I like to put in the center line of my head 
And here, my beak has a flat, um, flat top. So I want to think of sort of this end of the, 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 the beak as being really kind of an angular thing dropping down into here. So it's got a flat top, big eye that is connected into that. Edge of my mouth comes back here and then down. So I've just sort of put in a, a, a line kind of curving out here. And then I'm thinking about how long is this? How long kind of that? So that allows me, I'm gonna okay, stop my bill. Sorry to interrupt you, Jack. Um, could you scooch? Uh, thank you, sorry. Thank you, no, thank you so much. Um, so my, my beak is going to be, um, my beak is gonna be somewhere in here. Now down here on the bottom edge, you're seeing these sort of wrinkles coming in here. This is what's called the guler pouch. The guler pouch of this bird is a flexible wrinkly throat zone. And you'll sometimes see them fluttering this zone to kind of pump air into their body when they're trying to cool themselves. Um, so that's gonna be making part of the bottom edge of that bill. Let's also think about the top part of this as a more geometric shape. So I'm gonna really get kind of cubist in here. Here is, see these angles that I'm drawing in? And then it comes down here, the beak comes down. Then there's the mouth edge in here. And then there's the lower part. But think getting myself to sort of think about these changes in angles. So I'm gonna go over the flat top on the part, down the side here, hook underneath there. Over here, I'm gonna go over the flat top on the part, on the flat part on the top, down the side, and then down in here. So I'm, I'm this is helping me continue to think about these, planes in the face of this bird. So here I'm drawing a circle with a smaller black dot on it. It turns out on boobies, the pupil size is important. The look of the eye is really different on male and females. Males have this big kind of, um, you kind of, pinpoint pupil look going on um, with these tiny little pupils. So the females have much bigger pupils actually with a darker ring around the outside edge. So the yellow part is much smaller. Um, so it makes these ones look kind of just stunned. All right, I'm gonna draw this top line. I'm gonna put in just sort of a few kind of dotted line like that. See how that makes it look like there's sort of a feathered edge that comes into that. And I'm gonna put some sleepy marks around its eyes. I'm gonna punch in the dark at the corner of the mouth. And on these little wrinkles here, Sometimes on the, the wrinkle line, instead of drawing straight lines like this, I will have a line that kind of comes in like this, kind of coming and going. Then on the outside edge, it can have a harder line. Notice that the mandibular unguous that nail on the lower part here, it's got a little curve to it, just like you see on a gall. So it, there's it's sort of a reverse curve, subtle, but it's there. Maybe a little bit too emphasized there. And then if there is shadowing on this, shading or shadowing, 
that's going to help people really see this this change in angle here. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of a shadow here. And it, you, then you get to see that top part as, as a big flat surface. What? These are such cool <laughs> birds. Now look at this one. Whoa. So take a look at the, this. This is the, a, a brown morph red-footed booby. The last one was a blue-footed booby. Um, so let's just kind of look at the structure of the face here. And we sort of see that there are, um, we can see the line here between these two plates pretty clearly. The line sort of separating the nail here more obscured, this nail boundary more obscured. Let's see if we can make a sketch of this head and still be able to get those proportions. So this one, it's looking up this way. And so it has I like to kind of emphasize the angularity of a head like this, really show that there's a corner here. There's a corner here. There's a corner here. And later when I draw over that, I can kind of round those slightly, but you want to see that those are major inflection points. Um, there's, a, there's a big patch here where the, the, this beak is attaching to the face. And then we are, Let me check my proportions before I go any further. Here's one head length, here's another head length. So yeah, this must be a little bit more than a head length. Eh, maybe I'm a little bit too long. Nice to catch that before I commit to anything. So I'm gonna think of this beak three-dimensionally. There is my top plane surface. And then that is going to come down onto the beak and slightly rock back when it comes here. So I'm just helping myself think of this face three-dimensionally, getting how this curve here, the, 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 the part of the bird that, um, where the, the, the beak and skin meet the feathers. Let's look at that as a shape. It comes out, or actually it comes down more, doesn't it? Down more. And then down more. And then back. And then it's gonna loop around. On mine, the amount of I need more in the upper, okay. Now, I'm gonna make this front edge here with my kind of dark pencil. This is 2B lead in here. That's how I get such dark marks with this pencil. It's got 2B lead in it, which is more smudge uh, prone, but it allows me to, you know, if I want a dark mark, I can get a dark mark. Um, so these feathers come back here in a slightly irregular edge. The corner of the mouth is down here. And I'm gonna make it less, kind of squint at the screen and you realize that that, that, that boundary of the mar mouth gets less distinct, less prominent as it goes towards the beak. A Little bit of an overhang here. Uh, 
that's a big eye. A big eye, place it in here. I'm looking at the distance from the eye to the edges of these things. So I'm gonna place my eye roughly in here. And just to make it look wet and shiny, I'm gonna leave a little highlight on it, fill in that eye. Now that eye right now is just floating in the middle of this head C. Oh yeah, look at look at look at this one. He did my drawing. Look at the real one. My drawing, real one. I made my eye too big. Huh. Okay. Make an eye a little bit smaller. Generally, interesting parts of birds we tend to draw those too big. You know, the beak on the on the. Maybe I need it further back. Yeah, I do. I'm here, does that feel good? That feels better. Give it some sleepy marks, just tissue wrinkles around the eye here. Kind of place that eye into that head. And I'm gonna get this to wrap around the far side here. Hmm. Beak feels much too big, doesn't it? This beak feels a little bit larger proportionate to the other one. So what I'm going to do is put it on, I'm going to kind of trim it a little bit. I'm going to draw a heavier line in here, just interior to that. And then this stuff on the outside, when there's so when there's a heavier line there, people are like, oh, that's the edge of the beak. I thought that that dark other dark part was like, oh, okay, that's that's a thinner beak. And needs more of a swoop up in, and it needs, so I, I need to trim from this side and add a little bit up in here. This little edge here, that's what it needs. That, so this beak wants to come up here and sort of swoop up. Okay, I like that better. So there's a little bit of a, there's room for that, that swoop. How much of an overhang, how much of a lip is a good thing to look at in birds, but do be careful because very often in caged birds, in captive birds, this part will really start to grow. You can see that very clearly on caged hawks. They'll have much more of a curve at the tip of their beak than, than wild ones. The wild ones tend to be, you know, this one is constantly banging its beak into fish. Here's, so here's the albatross from the front. And look at these, these cool, let's just think about the eye placement. So the, the albatross is a special case, but it's so special that it just deserves a little bit of love. That has these, you know, uh, these cool kind of grandpa eyebrow things sticking out. And, and so if, if this is the head I'm going to draw, here's the center line on that head. Um, head comes down. There are these bumps that stick out. And then your head comes down from that. Your beak is going to be in 
this zone here, you can't see the shape of the underside, so I don't have to draw what that underside is doing. But the eyes are, are, are tucked under this, this hood. And their eyes are pointing down too. So the eye is pointing down a little bit. So as it's flying along, it's looking down and it has a little visor over its eyes. So on my line here, I'm gonna make my line kind of come out and then I'm going to, notice I'm gonna put my pencil on the outside. I'm gonna flick it in, just kind of flick, flick, flick. That makes this sort of feel just a little bit fluffy, these little bilberry marks. Try for a second not thinking of it as an eye, but just thinking of it as a shape. What does that shape do? It comes over, it comes down. The bottom side has a curve, and then it comes up. So sometimes if I get myself to draw an eye, I will make a shape that just, it, it, it's not really what I'm seeing because my brain has an idea of what an eye should look like. But if I guess just going to go like, oh, it's a shape that kind of comes down at an angle, then down steeply here. There is a steep side on the other side that kind of connects into a curve. Okay, that is my eye shape. Now I'm going to put a little bit of an, of a, um, sleepy mark underneath it. And my eye then fits into the head. Check this out at a three quarter view though. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Wow. This one, you can also see a little bit of black tissue right around the eye. So make a sketch of that. Just a little, little doodle off on the side of this kind of quick three quarter view. I've got a beak that is coming out of this area. And then it's swooping out there. And imagine a center line coming over the top of the head. So the furthest, the highest point of the head is gonna be back there on that. And if this is where the sort of a line across the top of my beak, then um, actually this one is looking towards me down this way a little bit more. So I'm gonna here. So if this then is the line across the top of the beak, the eyes are gonna be in the same level. So that's gonna help me not put my eye too low. For this one over on the side, I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a swoop, put a little hint of something dark in there, and then have this white edge that comes around. On the one on this side, I don't wanna put that eye too low. That's why I'm drawing these lines that kind of keep my I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow behind it here to show that ridge. I'm gonna put a little bit, the bottom of the head is kind of looping in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow down here to show that contour. My neck's a little bit too thick. <clears throat> if you did wanna put in those nostrils, I wanna make sure that the nostrils are at the same 
height relative to each other or the same angle as the eyes. So if my nostrils are going in there, I'm gonna put in a little nostril, keep my nostrils shape line. So I put a little dot in here on this side and on the other side, there's gonna be a bump. But you see how those then are on the same line as the top of the beak on the same line as the eyes. Look at that far eye there. Let's just blast in a quick, just a quick gesture sketch of that. I'm not even gonna go for my purple pencil. It's got a head. It has this sort of crazy thing that sticks out. Oh, wonderful. They're nibbling, it's nibbling its little buddy. Hey there, uh, nibble your feathers. Hmm. But now the wings, let's, let's put some wings on our birds. We're gonna, we had a whole workshop on the uh, birds in flight. And, um, but this one, we're gonna be having these wings folded up. But I wanna just remind us of the structure. There is a shoulder in here to an elbow in here to a wrist up in here, to a hand in here. These are the primary feathers. These are the primary feathers, primary feathers, primary feathers. They're the long pointed ones. They attach to the hand. These ones in here are the secondary feathers. They are uh, attached to the forearm. And then there's this other little section in here from the shoulder to the elbow. And humeral feathers are attached to those on long winged birds. So you don't really see humeral feathers on your warblers and finches and scrub jays in your backyard. But um, these long winged seabirds, we do get them as another little chunk, another little zone. Um, so here is a, anybody name that bird? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's doing its display, tail up, wings up, then it'll even take its head and sky point with that to make cool sounds because boobies are really cool. So a little blue-footed booby here has a shoulder that goes to an elbow up in here, to a wrist in here, to a hand in here. The primary feathers, again, are attached to the hand. The secondary feathers are attached on the forearm. And here is your little slot of humeral feathers sticking down attached uh, on the, 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 the tissues uh, around the humerus. So humerals, secondaries, primaries. So we've got three zones in our wings, whereas before, uh, with, with most birds, um, you know, if you're drawing a hawk, you're thinking about two zones in those wings um, because the humerals are not another big, long section. One last look at this. This is a Nazca booby, and it has humeral... Oh, can, can you point it out? Figure it out. Take a look at the wing. Can you spot the three zones? Isn't that cool? check you out, right? So, and this, this white part up here in the front, those are what are called the covert feathers. So there's covert feathers here um, and, and scapular feathers over the shoulders and covert feathers coming out in here and covert feathers coming out over the secondaries here. And then here are covert feathers on the primary feathers. Now, remember that the humerals here are dark. So as this bird comes in and folds its wing up, can you figure out what you're looking at here? Can you figure out what, let's, let's bounce back to this. What part of, there's parts of the wing that are going to be hidden. There are parts of the wings that you can see we see primarily this big block here. What is that? What is that? Drop your guess into the chat. What is this zone here? This big block right there. 
isn't this weird? It's really, really confusing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of folks are saying, are those the secondaries? Yes, they are. So we're gonna figure out what happened to the primaries, what happened to, yeah, Susan says that the primaries are tucked underneath. Let's go back there. Um, so, oh, no, not you, not you, there we go, All right? So here are our secondaries with the secondary cobrits. The primaries here are going to fold underneath all this business. They're going to fold up underneath here. And um, check this out, right? So this is a, uh, I went on YouTube and I did just a search for albatross folding wings. And so here's this albatross stretching its wings out and watch what happens. Here we go. So here's, here's our little albatross friend. And what you're looking at here, this is the block of the secondary feathers. This is the block of the secondary feathers right in here. Like, where are my primaries? Where are my humerals? Well, we're gonna just, uh, sweet bird, would you please stretch that wing out and show us something cool? Oh, thank you so much. Pause. All right, humeral feathers, humeral feathers in here. This is secondaries in here. This is primaries in here. How did we get there? All right, let's, let's, now, now watch what the humerals do as this, you see that big block of humerals right there. Watch what those, those sections do. Oh my goodness. Ah, you just, you just, you didn't just hide all that business from us. Look at that. Look at that. It's just the secondaries. It's just the, the primaries folding up on the prime. Look at those primaries hold the uh, uh, hide. Watch these primaries hide from you. Tucks underneath and gone. Just a little nugget of the primary sticking out there. That's all you get. That's all for you, right? Just the primary little tip sticks out there. That's the secondaries. What happened to the humerals? Let's watch again. The humerals are hidden underneath this big pile, right? So, boop, boop, boop. Let's watch those humerals. We're going to actually see the top edge of the humerals there. That's the humerals going down there. So, a little bit of nugget of humerals um, up here, humor, the covert feathers on the humerals, right? Then this whole sh shenanigan here that is secondaries with a little tidbit of primary sticking out underneath that now let's go back to our nazca booby nicely colored for us and look at this this is the block of the secondary feathers secondary coverts the lesser median and uh or, or sorry less and median and then the greater coverts are here and then these are the secondary feathers here. So these ones are pure, uh, several layers of white coverts, the, uh, the lesser and the median, and then the greater coverts being down here are, 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 are dark and the secondaries are dark. This bird's primaries are sticking out here. And all we see of the humerals is that's part of this bump here. Let's take a look at, the, we're gonna rotate this bird from the back, right? And now what we're seeing is here, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this over on the side. All right, let's, let's draw this, this little bird back. So, I always like to start my drawings with just a little negative shape. There's the head sticking up. There's the, the, the back. So it's got a little head in here going, oh, I'm preening, just having a really good day. And I've got a body that is in here. The midline of my back, I love putting in center lines. Midlines really helps keep me organized and oriented. Um, and um, especially when you're life drawing. It's, you know, with, with, with drawing from a photograph, you can kind of get away with just, I'm going to copy what I see, right? But when you're drawing from life, really keeping track of the center lines of things makes a huge, huge, huge difference. So it's a really good habit to get in. All right, I've got 
some feathers that are piling up here. There's a big white zone in here. There's a dark wedge that comes down underneath that. Um, then there's a little bit of darkness coming up in here. All right, so now I'm going to switch my, my, my pencils and um, my little bird friend here. So there is a big patch of white. And that is, see if you already know, that big patch of white on the side of the bird. Those are the median and lesser um, coverts on the secondaries. Then I have a block of secondaries that comes down from that. making a dark mass here. And then there are primaries sticking out underneath that. Those long primaries are actually sticking out underneath. So this bird has longer primaries than the albatross. Then I have, if you look at here, there's this sort of jump up into some darkness here. That is part of those dark feathers on the humerals that you're seeing um, tucked up in there. And then we're getting down into the other secondaries. Well, let's take a look at this from one more angle. So these are all covert feathers here, lesser, median, greater coverts on the secondaries. The secondaries are a big pile here. We see these as the primary sticking out underneath those. This business up in here, these are the edge of the, the back edge of the humerals coming up on this side. So this little bump right here, this is humeral feathers sticking up. On this frigate bird, these are the secondaries. You notice there's several rows coming down. These are the primaries. On the folded up wing, the primaries tuck in underneath those, and you also lose the, the humerals. The other thing which we're seeing here that's really cool is these big shaggy scruffy feathers in here over the top of this. Those aren't part of the humerals. Those are what are called the scapular feathers. And the scapular feathers can uh, on these birds sort of make a nice big sort of pile. They cover up the top edge of the wing. So here are my secondaries, here are my primaries, and this is my big kind of mantle of scapular feathers that are covering up a lot of the humerals that are gonna tuck underneath them. So you can, um, on, on, on some birds, you'll see in this area here, you'll see longer feathers that will cover up and things. Like scapulars are really big on ducks. Right. On the frigate birds, we've got these nice, this nice little scapular array as well. It was less prominent on the boobies. And the last little wing moment from the Galapagos Islands is, <laughs> check this thing out. Isn't that crazy? What happened to this one? Oh no, was there an oil slick? No. It just doesn't need to fly anymore. Um, so this is a species of cormorant, the flightless cormorant, that got out to the islands. And over time, its wings became really reduced. Um, it doesn't need to fly. It can get everything it needs right from the shore there. So that is, um, and you're, you're seeing um, here some scapular feathers you're seeing it's got these are what's left of its primaries. These are what's left of its secondaries. Isn't that a neat little beastie? Oh, wow. Look at this thing. This is a pile of scapular feathers. That's scapular feathers. Can you make sense of this stuff down here? So we're gonna just draw this together.
So again, I love me some negative shapes. So this one has a little hook around the back of the head and then its back is kind of coming down at an angle about like this. Um, so then I'm gonna put in a little ball of a head here and just sort of lightly look at the negative shape here. Okay, it comes down, it comes back. And then there's a wing occupying a lot of area in here. There's a big mass of scapular feathers pouring over the back. So these are the scap feathers in here. And then there are some crescents of other feathers. Look at this. So there's these little feathers make a pile here, slightly bigger feathers here, slightly larger ones there. And then there's these things sticking out here, like what's going on with this? What are these? They're those like, okay, yeah, these are my secondaries. What is this? These are your last three secondary feathers are called tertials and they're really big. They're bigger than the other feathers. And so you get this, it's kind of this step down effect of one, two, three scapular feathers. I mean, uh, secondary, secondary feathers. They make a big pile in the back and so the secondaries are seeing the edges of them come along here and then they get big. So the way I'm gonna block that in on my little bird drawing here, again, this is a magnificent frigate bird. Um, I'm gonna get, well, first of all, I wanna have my, I don't have my wing too big, all right. I'm going to have a zone of small feathers that comes across the top. There is a zone of, other small feathers in there that kind of spills down like that, more covert feathers. And on the bottom edge of my secondaries comes in here. And at the back of that, I have my, I see my tertial feathers sticking out. And there are some other classes which we've done where we kind of go really into depth with the wing. Um, and so if this is your first time getting introduced to things like you're hearing the term tertials, and you might be going like, oh my gosh, there's just so much vocabulary that comes spilling out of this. But do know that you're gonna, these are, if you hang out with us, you're gonna be hearing these terms again and again, and it's gonna get better. So I'm gonna give this bird a little bit less chest. And my primary feathers are then sticking out underneath that. So you can see the primary feathers disappearing into all the foliage. I'm going to give this bird a little hint of detail. So up in here, I'm going to sort of suggest that there are, there's a few of these sort of these little feathers. Um, but then I'm going to get into some big kind of scapular feathers down here. I don't have to draw them all. And even if I, if actually, if I did draw them all, it would, I would get kind of lost in all that detail there. For my wing, I'm just gonna suggest that there are some kind of rows of, of feathers that are coming down. And tertial feathers sticking out here. I'm really kind of drawing in the shadows underneath these tertial feathers. So instead of drawing in the feather, I like to think of, I'm gonna draw in the shadows of those feathers. I'm going to draw in the shadow here of these scapular feathers. And then the rest of the wing just gets a, an overall dark tone. My primaries are sticking out underneath that and they're lost in the foliage of the vegetation.
leave a, I left a little bit of light right there in the beak just to be a little bit of the sunlight glinting on that beak. That's called a lost and found edge. You see how you look at that and your brain goes like, okay, I think I know what's going on there. You don't have to fill in all the blanks for your viewer. Sometimes if you let the person who is looking at your drawing do a little bit of the work, it makes for a better drawing. And then this thing is up on a bunch of branches. Um, so I'm going to suggest some of that. Don't have to draw that it exactly branch for branch. But if I get the general sense of that, and when I'll show you kind of a cool thing you can do with, with these sort of tangles of, of branches. I'm now gonna put in some other branches behind these things. And then sometimes you can fill in those spaces between the branches. And it makes those light branches really pop out. Look at my scapular feathers. Do you like my scapular feathers? I like your scapular feathers. Those are really nice scapular feathers. Oh boy. So yeah, they they make a little pad that kind of covers up that top part of the wing. So, so you sometimes don't, very often you don't see, you don't see the humerals if there is a big pad of scapulars. Here's on this flightless cormorant. Look at this pad of scapular feathers here. That's what those are. These are all secondary feathers and secondary coverts. These are a few primary feathers sticking out underneath them. And here I have scapulars covering up um, a bunch of the humerals. Last little look at scapulars here. This is an albatross, the waved albatross. Let's draw that thing. That's just such a different body shape. And look at how different this body shape is from what we're looking at before. Like how there's, let, let's try, if you've ever done um, contour drawing, try just get your pencil on the forehead of this thing and just start your pencil wandering around. It's not going to end up looking like an albatross, but you want your brain to kind of take in all those different angles. These are its secondaries here. These are its primaries here. Doing a, a contour drawing is such a great way to get yourself to observe a shape, especially one that's kind of just unfamiliar to you. So I'm gonna do one too. So I'm now not looking at my paper Very often your proportions end up just kind of wonky. Anytime you're wondering kind of, you're feeling stuck on a drawing, you're wondering how can I kind of get back in my groove? You see, there, there, there are parts of it. There will be parts of your contour drawing where you capture something that is, it's really important about the shape and the form of that brief. 
Fabulous. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do something really quick on next, and um, we're just about um, uh, wrapping our, our program here today. So necks, birds have long necks um, with lots of vertebrae da, 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 down in them. And, but the neck can be, is, is really, really plastic. It's a part of the bird that, um, can really dramatically change its shape. So they can be all stacked out and straightened and you get this sort of crazy long neck look. This, by the way, take a look at the size of those pupils. In the chat, who can tell me if this is male or female? Ah. Look at the size of the pupils. This, yeah, Jasmine, that's a female. That's right, yes. You've just identified a booby by its eyes. I only have eyes for you. This is, and look, look at that. See that dark, ex, that extra dark ring around them? Oh, she's got such cool eyes. It gives it a really different expression than kind of the, 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 the makes them look cuter. Makes them look cuter rather than the, the, the sort of, um, again, the, I think of the, 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 the male as kind of looking a little bit like, um, the, the male booby is a, kind of a little bit of the, the drug addict look with the pinpoint pupil. So um, here we go. This is, oh, that's such a, a, a neat look. So there's, there's a long neck, but here's the same bird. Everybody kind of, let, let's, let's do this. What I want you to do is to just make a, um, a, a sketch of, go along the top of the head, the back of the neck, down is a little bit of a base and then you're on to the back. Kind of get that line, get that line, the line on the back of the neck, then there's a little bit of a base and then you're down onto the rest of the back. I'm gonna put in a little ball for its head and a little indicator of its beak sticking out. And now we're gonna look at the negative shape in the front. But before we do that, just put in a dot or two like I am to help you just say that roughly this is the approximate thickness of the neck. So there's the approximate thickness of the neck. And um, I'm not going to then be drawing dot to dot on these lines because, again, I want to be looking at the negative shape in the, the, the front of the neck of this bird. I wanna look at that negative shape. But those dots will roughly help me kind of keep my neck the right thickness. So we're now going to put this same bird's head. Oh, by the way, which one in this is the male? Which one is the female? Look at them together. Isn't that fun? <laughs> birds are cool. All right. And look at her. Let's do the same thing with this negative shape on the back, then put in the ball of the head, and then put in the negative shape for this zone in the front. By the negative shape, I mean the shape of the air that's right here. So don't think, don't get yourself looking at the bird itself. Um, I'm gonna look at, there's kind of a, it comes into a, a neat little point, then out to a flat platform, and then down sloping back, but there's a neat little point in there. She's got her head. And now I'm going to say I want my uh, roughly this kind of a thickness. And I'm going to believe that negative shape.
So looking at these negative shapes is a really powerful way to get yourself to draw the subtleties of necks that you get. So really pay attention to those. Sometimes though, when you just do that, you can get a neck that's too wide or too skinny. So on mine, it might start off too wide. And so I brought the back in a little bit and that, that helped it, but uh, I shouldn't be in quite that much. So you can trim these, you can move them around. These sorts of, these, these starter drawings, you're not committed to this. But once you kind of like the shapes that you've got, then you can kind of go in on them and make your more final decisions on them. Hmm. Look at those, how those, those, those negative shapes, that's what's going to give your birds, there's generally an S shape to the neck, but, uh, <clears throat> but by drawing those negative shapes, that's what's gonna really capture those, capture those for you. It looks like one of these may have a, a glandular problem, but actually really it's just got its ghoulier pouch, uh, open and is fluttering its cooler patch. So the one on the right is cooling itself. The one on the left is just cool. Little nugget of scapulars, secondaries, those may be primary sticking out there. They just look shaggy. These are amazing birds. I love the color of cormorant eyes too. Last thing about throats is that this is a ghoulier pouch on steroids. <laughs> um, oh, just so much fun. But look, 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 look how plastic these necks are. You can do this with your neck. You can do that with your neck. Which one is drawn right? Like if you drew this and then you look at somebody else, it's like, oh, did I make mine too short? No, this one is just taking its neck and tucked it down. But notice that this one is, this neck is much more straight. This one, we're starting to get these kinks in it kind of coming in here, coming in here. This is, we're straight and tall. We're a little bit more kinked, a little bit more bumps. And then let's tuck that in even more, more prominent bump in the front here because that S is kind of curving in here instead of stretching that S all the way up. All right, so you're gonna get more bumps, more angles as that head gets lower. Little note on body shape. Mm. These are such cool birds. Um, generally speaking, you're going to have a, um, a little ellipse of a body that is streamlined for moving through the air. And it is um, also streamlined for swimming through the water. As you're drawing those, thinking about those shapes, not as an oval, but thinking them of them as a three-dimensional egg shape is the, the, the sooner you start doing that in your drawings, the, the, the more quickly your drawings are going to start to kind of get a sense of dimension to them. And then what you'll be doing is combining that, let's say we've got a head that is coming uh, in, in here, you'll start to sort of think of how does this three-dimensional shape of, you know, if I've got my, 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 my head, thinking of that three-dimensionally, I think of how it comes down and attaches onto this other three-dimensional form. Your, your drawings 
are going to have a, a really different volume to you to them just because of the way that you are visualizing that. Oh, oh wow, look at this reflective light in here. There's that shadow coming up here, but the shadow continues up here, but not along that edge. Uh-oh. -uh. A little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a shadow in there. Um, so here you see that sort of that 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 sort of that egg, that football shape again from the front. It is more of because you're looking at that football at a foreshortened angle, the uh, Nazca booby here, um, then you are not. Uh, it's not, it doesn't look as long. So as you are drawing a bird that in the side view, you might do this. In the front view, right, that same view, view from the front is going to be a much shorter circle. It's even more dramatic if the bird is at holding its body at a steeper angle. Here's the top edge of that. Here's the bottom edge of that. So that from the front is doing that. So the apparent length of the body is going to change with the angle of the bird. Such a good looking thing. I just love the way the three dimensional forms on these birds come together. Um, so all these pictures are from birdpixel.com and you can go there and check them out. This, uh, get, guess what kind of booby this one is? <laughs> See, yeah, it's the only kind of booby that perches in trees. Uh, it's the red footed booby and this is the, the, the brown morph of it. They also come in white morph. So red feet, whoops. Red feet, you've got a red-footed booby. Um, and uh, you know, it's that's just that's a neat animal. You can tell it from the Nazca booby by the, by the foot color. Uh, so uh, one last little note, and then I'm gonna run out and get myself a COVID test. Um, check me out. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh-huh. All right, let's look at the toes here. One, two, three, four toes. I'm seeing four toes. But look at how those toes are connected with webbed tissue, All right? This is what's called a toady palmate foot, toady palmate foot. Um, so the pelicans, the boobies, the frigate birds, they all have toady palmate cormorants too. They've got toady palmate feet. The albatross has, just has a regular palmate foot. So it has three toes that are connected. But if you are toady palmate, T-O-D-I, I think. Um, if you're toady palmate, everybody say toady palmate. If this gets into your vocabulary, you just got, it's a, that's a fun word because how often do you get to say toady palmate? Um, oh, look at those, that little toady palmate moment over there. And they, they've got these, these super big flappy feet better for swimming because you've got also an additional little um, section that has webbing between it, All right? So you can see one, two, three sections of webbing between four toes. This foot here looks like it's just two sections with three toes, but no, what's that over there? Oh yeah, it's Tony Palmate. Can you name this booby? Excellent. By the way, on these birds, the brighter their feet, the greater their nesting success. <laughs> Bright feet are really, really, really attractive in the world of boobies. Um, hey, that's a little bit of fun with shorebirds, not shorebirds, with um, seabirds. Um, seabirds that are in uh, nesting, you'll have a chance to check those out. I have three minutes before I need to run off to a COVID test. Um, but in that, I uh, wanted to hear from anybody in our community who um, uh, do, uh, old birds have that S-shaped neck, uh, Mary? Yes, they do. Right, yeah, it would be, Susan uh, makes a good point. It wouldn't be nice if 
um, human beings, <laughs> if, if we had like inflatable, like if we could do the frigate bird thing, can you imagine um, what uh, uh, Saturday night would look like in a college town? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be, um, anyway, um, let's see if anybody has, if anybody wanted to uh, comments, thoughts, or ideas, we have two minutes. Anybody have something cool to share? Um, hey, let's um, jump over to, I see Susan's got her hand up. Um, and I'm going to add you into the spotlight. Um, and I think you can unmute now. Nope, let's try again. I think now you can unmute. There we go. Nope. <laughs> let's try this one more time. Uh, Yes. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey. So, real quick, I, I was I was thinking about what you're saying about the um, about the 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 secondaries being visible when the wings are folded, and I'm trying to decide if that is that true for all birds that I see or just them. But I was trying to figure out how can I tell if I see a sort of a patch of wing, how can I tell which part of the wing it is? And so I'm going to ask you if maybe this is if this is correct. I'm thinking that the, the primaries are basically a big parallelogram. And that the that the the, the, the arms are the secondaries, and that the the actual feathers they might they might be at different angles relative to that depending on how it's folded, but I'd always would see a bunch of parallel feathers. But if I'm looking at the primaries, that they're more coming out from a single point, not exactly, perhaps. Yes. I mean, it's not yes. A, yes. 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 Um, um, you're you're absolutely right, Susan. So this is a great little little. Uh, let me. Join you back on. Oh, um, let me join you back in the spotlight here. Um, if I can find myself. Um, I am. Oh, there we are. Um, so you're, you're absolutely right. So if you get to see, let's take, uh, if you were to be able to see these primaries here, um, I'm going to do more of a diagram view of it. They still would make a big wedge, but along the back edge of it, you would see the trailing edge of all of those primary feathers like that. And then they would be all lining up like this. Okay, all, all just kind of stacked up together because they're not. Yeah, they, they come into a big pile. And when they get fanned out, it really is like a, it really is like a fan where they're really all kind of coming out from. Absolutely, the absolutely, okay. they are connecting to the hand in here like this, and so they are exactly as you say, they are fanning. Whereas uh, attached to the uh, forearm here the secondaries are coming in like that. And um, so thank you for, uh, <laughs> um, thank you so much um, for, for helping me kind of clarify that. Thank you for, for answering my question. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Um, I, unfortunately, at this point, um, I am going to need to, uh, to, 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 to bounce, but, um, avail, would you be, um, available to, uh, help facilitate some sharing and, um, and, and help us see some of the things that are happening in people's sketchbooks and journals? Yeah, no problem. That would be fantastic. Um, I am going to, let's see. I am going to oh, find you, there you are. Um, and I'm now making you the host. Okay. Yeah, just like that. So um, host Eva, thank you so much for um, helping us uh, sort of manage uh, these, these meetings. 
for all my friends out there, I'm sorry I don't have a moment to, right now to, to take a look into your journals and see the things that are going on there, but um, I will be able to see some of this on the recording. And um, be well, be kind, let's take care of each other, let's take care of this planet, and um, get out in nature if you have a chance to hang out with a seabird. Walters, talking to you. Uh, <laughs> and have some real fun with that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you, Jack. Take good care. We'll see you again soon. See you again soon.